Hello and welcome back to the shop. Once again, it's Mike. Today I'm going to walk you through how I built this little guy. Now, this ugly little thing is what's called a servo skull from Warhammer 40,000. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with Warhammer 40,000, it's um, well, it's a tabletop miniature war game that started as a role-playing game, more or less, all the way back in 1987, and it. It's from a company called Games Workshop, and to tell you the entire backstory of Warhammer 40,000 would likely take the rest of my life. So instead, I'm going to direct you to a couple of other YouTubers who are very good at telling the backstory of Warhammer 40,000. That is Luton09 and Oculus Imperia, two of my favorite YouTubers actually, who all they do is videos on the history and lore of Warhammer 40,000 and it's done brilliantly and they're they're kind of my go-to listens for, for long trips. Now, in the backstory of Warhammer 40,000, which is very, I'll be using the term grim dark a lot, um, there's a lot of very odd dark things that go on in Warhammer 40,000 and one of them is the servo skull. Now the servo skull is essentially a drone that has a bunch of sensors and an anti-gravity system squeezed into somebody's skull. Maybe a saint or a criminal, who knows. They can be just about anybody. And they're used for well, pretty much what drones are used for. Surveillance, um, surveying things. Some of them are weaponized. It's, uh, it, it's really random and it's really whatever the particular story and narrative needs at the time is what they are. And I'm building a cosplay of an Inquisitor. And Inquisitors are essentially the secret police of the Imperium of humanity. And the Imperium is essentially an ultra-religious, hyper-fascist state. And they're supposedly the good guys. So that tells you a little bit about Warhammer 40k as a setting. Um, that the good guys are absolutely horrible, horrible people, for the most part. Enough talk, let's build. So this skull actually came from the bodies exhibit that was traveling through Columbus, Ohio many years ago. There's a jaw that uh, was actually attached by some springs, and I went ahead and removed those because, quite frankly, I didn't, I didn't need the lower jaw for this. So off it goes. Now, I need to make some holes big enough to install some of the parts that I intend to put on this thing. And I learned the hard way that with this style of resin, which is the kind of the type of resin you see with maquette statues and whatnot, that it smokes out really, really fast. In fact, I actually caught this thing on fire uh, while doing this. So wear proper PPE. Eyepiece. It fits. Look at that. Isn't that cool? It's like a big giant monocle. I cut the hole in the top. Now, the intention for this was just to have some exposed circuitry and whatnot, and it, it ended up being that, but this, like I said, this this was all a completely organic build. I, I didn't really plan this out at all. I just sort of went with what seemed right at the time. I cut this hole out on the side, because I have a big chunk left over from an old camera that I decided to install on the side there to give it a nice mechanical look and then his other eye is actually the base of a different camera actually the same camera that that lens comes from and then i went ahead and decided to put one light in here which is just a red led powered by a, a nine volt which you can actually see the nine volt on the outside of it on the finished version of this and then all of that was actually just hot glued together it worked out pretty well. That's the uh, that's actually the face of a of a Nikon camera, a little one of the three lens turret cameras that I uh, found at a junk store for next to nothing. It didn't work. It was completely corroded inside, and I just stripped it for parts. Now for the top here. I want to put what's called a doubler underneath it so that I don't actually have to install anything down inside. And to do that, I just take a pencil and hold this piece of sheet styrene against there, which is a uh, 60 thousandths black sheet styrene, and draw a rough approximation of that hole on there. And now cut it out slightly larger so that I can glue it to the inside. 
Let me move some junk out of the way here. Then I just freehanded all this. I, I measured very little with this whole thing, and I don't think I actually applied a straight edge to any single cut on it. And then roll it around your uh, your scalpel to help meet the contours of it. And then this is just all hand bent into shape to make it a little bit easier for it to grab contours because it's just super glued on there. Like a poorly made glove. If you're going to uh, assemble stuff with super glue, uh, make sure you use lots of accelerator. And now, this is just random bits and bobs that I found. I think that's actually part of a camera. I don't know what that's from. I don't know where it came from or how I got it, but it, it, everything is just installed with super glue. And it was whatever I pulled out of the box was what I used. This is a, <clears throat> a bit of, uh, I think this is actually an, an XL55 that I disassembled at one point. And that's some leftovers from a, a Canon XL55. Just glue that guy in place wherever wherever it looks good. And then w whenever you're kit bashing like this, a lot of times, particularly just with your Greeblies, it's wherever it looks good. Because you don't actually have to have a function for anything. Because half of this stuff, I wouldn't know what it would do. I don't, I don't know how the operating system of a floating skull works. Some, I don't know what kit this was. I think that's a Gamma Goat. Yeah, it is. Actually, it's a Tamiya 135th scale Gamma Goat. There's some parts left over on it after I built one. Whenever you build model kits, if you do build model kits, hang on to the parts if you decide to kit bash. There's another piece of camera glued on there. Super glued in place. Another piece of the Gamma Goat, I think. Yep, yeah, another piece of Gamma Goat. Don't know what that's from. No clue. <laughs> now, the rest of him, this is after almost all of his parts are installed, as a matter of fact. There's that face of the camera on the side there. And then on the back, if you're a Star Wars fan, that's actually Princess Leia's rank badge from Endor. These little motors are from an old chart recorder. The blue pieces are from RC kits from Radio Shack, some ancient tubing. That metal disc down there is from the TK-1 helmet that I used to make the Expanse uh, helmet. And then that other metal disc down there is the same thing. That blue bit on the front is actually from a proton pack build I never completed. And 9 volt battery just mounted on the side there, just exposed. Like you do. The little brass pieces are from the insides of cameras. Just random bits and bobs all over the place. Kit bashing's the best. Now it's all painted, and I've started putting the base coat on. Which the base coat is a mix of Japanese uniform tan and some white, which gives it a roughly bone color. Now, the initial wash is a black wash, which is just a simple black wash. Um, mix water and, in this case, really dirty water and black paint together. On all the paints that I used in this are Vallejo. The base is made from some of those little blue strips that from the RC cars that uh, I just mounted to the bottom of it, which is ultimately became the permanent uh, permanent base for it. Now, whenever you do weathering over large surfaces like this, particularly a big wash like this, what you want to do is you want to spread it on quite liberally. Don't worry about, oh no, I've changed the color entirely. That's precisely what we're doing here. We're actually staining the paint that's underneath. And once we get a good healthy portion of it on, you take a paper towel, and at least I do, I dab it off. I actually have uh, a damp paper towel in my hand there. Never wipe it off because you leave streaks. You just go through it and you, you dab all of it off, all the excess, until you like the appearance. And then you go back and you put another coat of wash on it. And then you do that again, and again and again, until you're happy with it. And there it is. Uh, the final wash is just a chocolate brown wash from Vallejo. And then uh, I did went through and did a, uh, a pin wash with some Tamiya 
uh, panel line color black on the, the whatever the, the, the seams of the skull and then around some of the panels to give it a little bit of a shadow. Now for the metal, I'm going to use graphite powder. Now graphite powder is a fantastic way to get something that is not metal to look like metal. The graphite powder, you just get it on your finger and rub it onto the surface that, uh, that you want to look metallic. And if you get it on anything else, it's going to look metallic as well. So try to be careful as to where you put it. But the more you polish it, the shinier it gets, of course, to a degree, everything has a limit. But you can see that just with a few passes of just my finger, this is starting to look metallic. Neato. Almost fell over. And then this was a little bit of graphite powder here. And the same on the, 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 the brow piece, the uh, in, in, Inquisition insignia. Well, I hope that that was entertaining and that uh, you do check out Luton 09 and Oculus Imperia on YouTube. Those, their links are below uh, so that you can go check out uh, some more lore about Warhammer 40,000 and perhaps learn a little bit about it that you didn't know beforehand. Um, hopefully this inspired you to try your own kit bashing or just take a random object and glue some stuff to it and give it a name. And um, yeah, I, this was a lot of fun to build. Uh, the kit bashing stuff like this is rather cathartic for me because I have, I have no plan. It's a completely organic build and, and it was a great amount of fun to do. But uh, thank you again for watching. Please consider Patreon and uh, liking and subscribing my channel, which will help actually grow my channel quite a bit. Um, please check out my social media links below so you can see the other work that I do. And, uh, yeah, thank you again for watching. Cheers. Time to go to bed, bud. <laughs>